We're about to interview Tara Summers. I love Tara. <laughs> she's one of my favorites. <laughs> Tim introduced me a few years ago, and um, she's based out of Denver. And I get to actually see her and dance with her through this past couple years, and I'm like, man, I want to know more about her. And Tim had this brilliant idea to interview her and share it with everybody. And Tara is just an awesome all-star West Coast Swing dancer. If you live in Colorado and you love West Coast Swing, you're probably going to know about Tara Summers. She travels all over the state. She's kind of like an apostle for West Coast Swing, and we really feel blessed to have her. So I hope you enjoy your interview uh, with Tara Summers. Let's do it. <laughs> We are here, Tara Summers, in Colorado Springs. Thanks for having me. How did you get started in West Coast Swing? So I think I had a pretty typical story uh, to a lot of people where I kind of stumbled across West Coast Swing in the country bars. So I was big into line dancing country dancing but I met someone there who was like hey do you know how to west coast swing and I was like yeah I can follow anything <laughs> I got this and then gets me out on the floor and he's leading me around and I was like I have no idea what you are doing <laughs> and so he invited me to my very first west coast swing lesson oh, okay. at the stampede yeah. and that was and I fell in love first oh, wow. class that was late 2009, oh. I would say, or mid-2009. Yeah, from that point on, did you have any particular teachers or mentors that you looked up to or followed or whatever? I mean, when I first started, um, I was working with Pat and Kevin Whiteley, who were the ones that were teaching at mm -hmm. the Stampede at the time. So they yeah. were my first teachers. Uh -huh. I was there every week taking group classes. Um, and then I think my very first private lesson was with just one of the local all-stars here in town. Um, but when I really started traveling and like getting into competitions and stuff, um, people I looked up to and worked with were like Jennifer DeLuca. Oh. Um, but I, I think she was the one I idolized the most. I liked her style and I was like, I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely took from a lot of people. So locally working with the speakers, Trevor and Chelsea speak a lot. Um, and I just wanted to get a lot of different opinions and perspectives. So I would just, when I would travel, I'd take a lesson from a lot of different people, which could have been good and could have been bad in my journey, I guess. Like sometimes if you have a little more focus and direction, that can be good. But maybe this also opened my eyes to all the different right. perspectives and ideas. And you're um, you're an all-star now. So you had to work your way up. Did. And what was that like? I mean, where did you start? Um, I think Janet was curious about, was it hard to build those points? And, sure. Um, it was super hard, I feel like, for everybody I know. I was very hard on myself. So I, I do feel I had a slight advantage in a few ways. Um, thinking that I started 12 plus years ago, the community was a lot smaller and events were a lot smaller. So the comp there wasn't as much competition, I suppose, in the way of like if you travel to an event now. Um, there was also, so I mean, I was traveling probably once I got into it every other month. So it was a lot of traveling, mm -hmm. and that was just you going as a hobby to go to these. Yeah, I just I fell in love with it, and I, <laughs> you know, found I found a really nice group of friends that we all traveled together. We would just like pick up and drive to Palm Springs or drive to right. Vegas and drive to Texas or somewhere. We drove to Oklahoma randomly, a 10 hour drive, just to get to events whenever we could. Um, the point system was also different then. So, um, and I, I don't necessarily remember, but I know the points have shifted. And then, so I accelerated pretty quickly through novice, intermediate, and then I felt like I hung out and advanced a little while longer. That one was more challenging and I was also traveling less. Um, and then once I made it to All-Star, I really stopped traveling. Um, life just changed. Mm -hmm. And then once I had a kid, life changed even more. So mm -hmm. I definitely don't travel as much anymore. So that's like Jack and Jill journey. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack and I know Jill you, journey. Did a, you did a routine with um, Jonathan too. In a, what was a that rising group? star rising routine star. with Jonathan Pritchard. Uh -huh. um, we, I think we only put it on the floor like two or three times. 
Um, <clears throat> we went to like um, City of Angels. We did it here in Denver a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, and then he he went through life changes where like he had a kid and took on swing time and just had mm -hmm. too much to mm -hmm. put into a routine. So mm -hmm. we kind of had to put that on the back burner. And then it was my turn to have a kid. So it just never came back to routine, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely a goal of mine. Like I love choreography and I love doing routines and performing. So I would love to find a partner one day again and try and do that. Dancing with friends. Yes. Anybody who knows anything about you all knows about dancing with friends, which is a group of uh, dancers with developmental disabilities. Um, and physical, yeah. And physical mm -hmm. disabilities that you've worked with for years. Mm -hmm. Um, I think 5280 uh, was one of the debuts. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, and, it was, <laughs> and it was huge, wasn't it? It was it, a huge success. It was, it was the very first year 5280 was pointed, so technically it was their second year. Okay. But it was their very first year they were pointed, and the event directors at the time I was really close with, and um, they she helped me, like she would volunteer for Dancing with Friends, and she was like, we should like bring you guys out to the event and we should perform. And it was just kind of this very casual idea. Um, but we jumped on it. We're like, yes, this is a, this is going to be fun. So we came up with this whole routine and um, had volunteers help in like formations. And it was just a very, very fun experience to put that on the floor. And the response from the, the community and the attendees was overwhelming yeah. yeah it gives me goosebumps like if, if anybody hasn't seen um, yeah like, right if they're yeah. Yeah. yeah i should check them out yeah. 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 none of us were expecting that response uh, even my my whole group was just like what is happening <laughs> <laughs> we were just dancing <laughs> so um yeah we left the we left the ballroom super excited and happy and we're talking to the family that's the part that and, like Go for it, right? Yeah, it was that rush. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how did you get started with that, by the way? How did you get started, and how did that come about that you trained these guys? And yeah, again, like kind of an accident, um, which sounds crazy. Um, I have been in home health care for many, many years. So, well, not currently, but I was for many, many years. I was a CNA, worked in home and worked in schools and just was always in that special needs community. And so I had a client, her name's Emily, and she has cerebral palsy, she's in a wheelchair. And her and I, I don't remember what we were doing, we were sitting at the computer one day, trying to figure out just things to do, because we're always looking for activities, ways to be involved in the community. Um, and we were, I was dancing at what was Over Street Dance Center at the time that had just opened and um, still kind of feeling like a baby West Coast Swing dancer. And um, we were just like, why don't we invite some of your friends, like Emily's friends, to the studio and we'll, we'll just dance, we'll turn on some music, we'll like, we didn't know what it was gonna become. And then all of a sudden it became a weekly thing. We were doing it every week. And then all of a sudden I was doing two classes a week. And all of a sudden I was doing three classes a week. And then all of a sudden we were doing performances and like doing routines and it just kept building and I was just, just ran with it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love that. If anybody wants to donate, is there, uh, by the way, it's still continuing on a weekly basis to this yeah, day. Yeah, right? um, COVID unfortunately kind of <laughs> kicked, yeah, yeah, killed some momentum that we had for sure. We had Zoom classes going on for a really long time. Mm -hmm. I still have Zoom classes I run on Tuesdays. We still have two classes a week, but they're, they're small, and I what I miss the most is our performance group. Mm -hmm. We have not been able to get back mm -hmm. together. So, um, but yes, we're still running classes. So we can put some info about how to contact or donate. If sure. Cool. Um, we're always looking for sponsors um, to just sponsor a family or a dancer because not everyone can afford to pay like the drop-in price or a monthly price or something. Mm -hmm. So um, if you wanted to sponsor a specific kiddo or just like donate um, studio rental space, or that's those kind of things your the money would go to. So, so like what yeah. technique 
or skills or anything like that that you can think of that you had to acquire or finally just get in your body or like work on really hard maybe or maybe it just fell in and you're like oh okay now I get it and all of a sudden it really accelerated your west coast swing and helped you get further um uh, that's a tough one yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if I'll have quite a conventional answer um so I don't feel like there was a specific skill or or specific work that I put in around dance. Um, but I do feel like um, um, me getting more fit within my body, um, core strength, leg strength, um, just getting getting to the gym and working those muscles and being able to like engage lats and engage my booty and engage my core in a way that supports me as a dancer. So, because now you, you teach dance. I do. Right? Right? And um, there are certain things that I hold of really high value, and that's one of them, is being strong and knowing, like, in order to really connect correctly and do these things correctly, you do have to be strong, mm -hmm. you know, particularly in your lats and in your core and in your booty. And mm -hmm. like, like you were saying, yeah. it's actually your ankles, things oh, like yeah. that, where, yeah. you know, it is, yeah, because people are in front of the, you know, computer a lot or yeah. their phones or whatever, so they're real tight in here. So it's actually even harder for them to really open that up because it's just not, it's just so tight for sure. one and then maybe even underworked mm -hmm. like lots and stuff because we do have to have it engaged the whole time but yet be nice and like relaxed right. at the same time mm -hmm. and my question is like how do you handle that basically like when you teach like how do you get them mm -hmm. to get those things that are fundamental for sure. the dance yeah. into them? Um, so obviously every person is different and every person has different strengths and weaknesses like ankles like you said for example I do have lots of students, um, especially if you like our elderly community, who struggle with like ankle weakness and stuff. So I try to always give tips, things that you can do at home and outside of dance. I'm a big advocate for doing things outside of pr practicing dance and social dancing classes that will strengthen your body and strengthen your and things you have to think about while you're dancing, right? Because it, it in muscle, muscle memory, memory yeah. right? Yeah. So like workout bands on your ankles is a great way of just getting that mobility. You can just sit on the couch in front of the TV and work out with a band. Same thing um, in, in your hips and in your lats. Um, workout bands at home, those stretchy bands um, are great tools to um, work on stabilizer muscles for balance and strength and all those kinds of things. Just waking up muscles and finding awareness of them because if you're not super active and you're not super um, athletic, Sometimes engaging a muscle, you're like, where is that muscle? I don't even know what it feels like. So, yeah, to find the lats is really hard. Find those game. lats, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. I really, really enjoy teaching. Um, if anything, that's been a surprise and like the most wonderful surprise out of all of this West Coast Swing journey. Oh is, yeah, um, how did you get into that anyway? Into teaching? Yeah. I think I was just, I was hungry and excited to to be the best that I could be like as quickly as possible. And anybody who was anybody I saw was teaching. And so um, I taught with Michael Miller a lot. When, um, I first was a baby dancer, I would shadow Michael Miller and I would shadow um, like Chelsea basically be like a helper yeah. for them during the mm -hmm. workshops? Okay. Yeah, and I would teach with them and, and learn their techniques and kind of get my own feel. And then I just kind of kept going at it and going at it. And, and then you built your own kind of like little army? <laughs> I guess, yeah. And I just kind of eventually got a, you know, I was around enough and a little bit of a reputation. and, and So you're in demand. I, <laughs> At the moment, it's kind of <laughs> weird. It's kind of weird, but I do. Yeah, it's um, it's exciting. I have to find it's, but it's finding that balance now because I do have a family life. Um, and another job, right? No, like oh, dance, is, dance, dance is my full time. Well, my full time job, right? So mom, dance. Yeah. But that's the challenge too, is because dance is my passion and dance is something I love so much that if you have to be careful how much you teach and how much it becomes work or else you just lose a little bit of the joy. And I've gone through those stages a couple of times where I'm like not social dancing as much because I'm just burnt out and I'm not in the mood. Um, so then I try to step back, dial it back a little bit so that I can 
that seems to help. Is get back into it. Oh yeah, if I'm gone for a little while that I'm craving it again, again, yeah, I need to get back out dancing. Okay, good. Yeah. Were you always kind of a dancer when you were little and wanted to dance? Yeah. But I was always in musicals and theater and mm -hmm. choirs. I was always in music, but I never really got into dance until I was a teenager. So I got into cheerleading in high school, found um, line dancing in high school, and when I was 15, out at the girls' new house. And so that's that's kind of how that started. So and I didn't find. Yeah, the Sunday nights, family night. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did a lot of growing up in that bar. <laughs> <laughs> Turned 21 in that bar. Found West Coast Swing in that bar. Oh, wow. lifetime friends in that bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go go figure, huh? Um, I mean, when I was a senior in high school or whatnot, junior senior high school, it was like cool to go okay. to the Grizzly Rose on Sunday nights. So. West Coast Swing community you said has changed and grown so much already. Yeah. Um, you know, just in the past, whatever, like 13, 14 years mm -hmm. since you started. Are there things that you might want to change in the industry? Well, some of the changes that I love, but are also very controversial, are like the music, for example. It's like when I started, music was a lot faster. Um, it was still in the contemporary world and like the, the pop world. Um, so I hadn't, I missed out on like the big bluesy Oh. Times of West Coast. Is that right before that? I, I mean, it was yeah, I was way before that, okay. but it's slowly been doing this transition to more contemporary stuff, and now we're like heading down into these like <sighs> super slow, groovy, really lyrical like, and I love it actually. I, but I know it's controversial, and I know that there is this like is this really considered swing dancing anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Where's that line draw between like traditional swing and, and this contemporary look of swing? Um, and it's, it's kind of hard to have both, but that's also what's so magical about West Coast Swing is that it can be done to so many different types of music and, and you can just really create your own character and your own energy, um, your own story around each dance, you know, and it, it, you can make it your own. Um, you can't get sick of the music because it's just, it changes all the time. Like, you know, we're not just stuck in country or stuck in blues or stuck in contemporary. Um, so I love that about the dance. Um, I think if I were to change things, um, I think there's struggles around the competition side, um, and just how, um, unstructured competition is, I suppose. And when they created the point system and when they created the WSDC, the World Swing Dance Council, that it, um, there, I mean, it was a very, very small community, right? And I think they were all dancing the same and they probably didn't anticipate these changes, right? That were gonna come. So now we have people from all over the world, all over the country that are different styles, different things that appeal to them, different ways they were taught. Um, and so when you get into a competition and you have all these different judges, it's just very subjective and they're all, they have very different, like, I put you in 10th and I put you, and another judge pushes you, pushes you, puts you in first, right? Yeah. So it's like, how do you really judge that competition without guidelines? And how do you take that as a, as a competitor? How do you take that as like, well, did I do well or did I not do well? What should I change? What should I not? So I know that that's really challenging as a competitor and you really have to be careful to not take it too hard. Now that these events are so huge, you have hundreds and hundreds of people that you're competing against in one division you have three seconds to be looked at and judged and it's just mm -hmm. very this is not a great representation of you as a dancer as a whole and i want that's what i want people to remember and know is that remember why you're competing know why you're competing and don't take it too hard because um it's just not a good representation of you as a dancer. It is super subjective. Maybe they need some kind of like training to be like, okay, this is what we think is like that. We all come together and say, yeah. this is what is correct or standardized yeah. or something. I know there's some great people in our community, um, along with I think Robert Royston, that are working, and is it Doug Rozier maybe that's mm -hmm. working to create he is. a more standardized like judging system? And it's exciting. It's an exciting time in our dance to think that. Maybe we could have a more fair, Just it's more fair, yeah, a more fair judging, fair, fair. fair. judging, it's more fair, yes, yes, <laughs> for everybody, you know. So, and then judges know 
what they're what they're judging. What are we looking for exactly? So, is there anything else um, about West Coast Swing, your journey, um, or just uh, future inspiration, or about anything that you want to say? Um, <laughs> I'd say be careful, like with your excitement, because West Coast Swing can be so addicting, and it can be so fun, and you just want to like go in all in sometimes, and that's. What I did, and I, I rushed my journey, I think. I rushed my journey. Um, and I wish that I had taken more time to be a student versus jumping into, I need to be a competitor and a teacher. However, I love teaching and I love where I am now, but I do feel like I did a lot of backtracking in my journey to go back and make sure that I have a better foundation that I kind of skipped past. Mm. So I would caution those that maybe catch on really um, quickly, who feel like have that, that natural ability to really take the time to dive in to the basics and that foundation and to not just like get excited about the moves and the flash and the, the flash and the trash, they say, right? Because that's fun, but that all will, that will all happen. The foundation is important. And it's just a lifetime journey. You're, I mean, I am still learning and growing and I want to always be continuing to learn so not only does it make me a better dancer but it makes me a better instructor and i know that i don't know it all and we have to remember that we don't know it all and that we always have room for growth and improvement so um it's important to just keep, keep learning best you can in any way possible whether it's videos or going to events or whatever you have accessible to you okay well thank you tara thank we you did it Now we're going to shut down. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll get a drink.